Hey everybody, Michael Harris here. Today my special guest is John Vickers, who is the uh, owner of, oh my God, I forgot the name of your company. What's the name of your company, John? Explosive Performance Academy. <laughs> Explosive Performance Co uh, Academy. And he and I met in a uh, training together with an intergalactically famous guy that we won't name his name, but both of us have an interest uh, in NLP and communication. And I just thought I'd bring you on here because you, I love athletics. And, you know, personally, I wanted to be a, a professional baseball player, but I never knew about uh, working styles. So when they said, you know, go practice, I, I didn't do that. But how did you get into this, John? Yeah, so, I mean, I grew up playing football, right? I, I started playing football when I was eight years old. I had, I had dreams of playing professional professional football. I in high school I ended up tearing my ACL as a sophomore and um that was a like a major setback for me. Mm -hmm. I also didn't have the greatest genetics to play the position that I played. I was a I was an offensive lineman and um I mean I'm 6 foot 220 pounds so that wasn't really going to transfer to the NFL. I was good enough to play college ball. I played division three college ball, played defensive end in college and was injured a lot throughout college. I had some ankles and then senior year, I was heading into my best year and uh, ended up taking a weird step and getting pushed from behind at the same time and ended up stretching out my ACL graft and tearing my meniscus. So that was my, that, that was the end of my college career. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, so I did. Did you, did you start working on athletic uh, sports performance and uh, like after that? So I actually, so I got my degree in exercise science. I, while I was getting my degree, I really had no idea what I wanted to do with it. I ended up doing an internship between my junior and senior year of college with a sports performance company, and uh, this was really before there were any sports performance companies around. Now mm -hmm. they're all over the place. But I fell in love with it at that point. And after I graduated, I knew that like, that's what I wanted to do. It was either going to the private sector of sports performance or going to college strength and conditioning. And uh, I, I tried the college strength and conditioning a little bit, didn't really like that route. Uh, it was a little, a little crazy, very little pay uh, for a very long time until you become a head strength coach. and. Now it's pretty good money, but I just didn't want to do that route. So, yeah, so, so I started. Working. So what inspired you to blend NLP slash communication with a sports performance coaching? Well, I knew like, I knew communication was one of my weak points. Like I, I can be direct when it comes to instruction and whatnot, but uh, when it comes to actually communicating what I do to the marketplace, mm -hmm. I knew I needed to improve that. And I kind of stumbled upon it. And I I started hearing a little bit more about NLP and I started kind of going down the, the rabbit hole of NLP and ended up being referred to our, our mentor uh, through somebody else. Mm -hmm. and did like a, a webinar that he was doing and I was like all right like it's time to learn more I, I need to I need to understand this I need to understand how to communicate how to communicate my message and just honestly be able to use this to help my athletes become better too yeah, absolutely let's talk about how you do what you do because it's it's unique and one of the one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you was to, like, to get the lowdown. You have a very unique five-star formula. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So it's a, um, I mean, it's a program based around five pillars, right? I have my five, five main pillars, which I'll go through, through each of them with you. We have uh, champion mindset. So it's mindset training. It's mm -hmm. really a lot of what NLP is. Mm -hmm. Um your elite performance development, which is a training piece, which we have what we call the seven essentials of performance, um, which are speed, strength, power, 
multi-directional skill, energy system development, core development, and mobility. And then we have uh, precise recovery, which is your sleep and your nutrition and other types of implement to help recover quicker, more efficiently. Development mapping, which is actually setting goals, setting targets, and reverse engineering that process, which we don't see much in in this this world when it comes to no, sports. No, not prop, not really. No, no, it's like you set goals, but then, like, okay, like what are, what are we doing? We we're mm -hmm. just gonna work towards it, right? But there's not necessarily a process or a map for it. And then actually my most favorite part right now at the point at this point is athletic identity which is the branding piece so when we talk about the branding piece we're talking about recruiting mm -hmm. and we're talking about the name image and likeness where athletes are able to profit off from their their name their image and likeness right which is new in the ncaa over the last couple of years that's cool and do you do you do that I've never heard of a company doing that. So, yes, I, I'm stepping into it now. There's a lot of reluctancy around it, uh, especially here in Michigan, because they, have, they haven't officially passed a bill to allow athletes, like high school athletes, to, to profit off from that. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge disconnect on athletes actually being able to profit off from their, their own name. Mm -hmm. Um, the most college athletes are not making money. If, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're the top guy, if you're a guy like, um, uh, man, I can't even think of any names right now. If, if you're the best player on your team, you're making some money. You're getting some, some deals, I guess, like Blake Corum from Michigan, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the quarterback from Ohio state last year. I can't remember his name, CJ Stroud. Mm -hmm. uh, like I know those guys are all making money, but your uh I don't know, your your defensive end that isn't a superstar, he's not making any any type of money. Um so yeah, that's something that I'm I've started doing and uh trying to work around all the reluctancy and all the the, the there haven't been a lot of proven methods, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess we got to. So gotta you're the guy, you're the guy like cutting the trail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there is a company that connects athletes with businesses, mm -hmm. but uh, it's I, like as a business owner, unless you really understand social media, you don't mm -hmm. necessarily understand the value behind it. Mm -hmm. So you're not necessarily using that service if that yep. makes sense i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to your five-star formula here for a second are there certain athletes or certain sports that respond particularly well to your formula or are there exceptions it's i mean it's pretty much it's pretty much everybody mm -hmm. but we get mostly football and basketball mm -hmm. um, no hockey you're way up. You're in hockey land. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. I don't know. We don't we don't get a lot of hockey. I've had hockey in the past, but not since I created the five star formula. There are a couple other companies that are pretty well known for hockey, and I just I don't know. I my like my I love working with the basketball players. We'll we'll see some major improvements from those guys. Like some guys adding four inches in in six weeks to their vertical jump. Wow. So. I, like last year. So, we so John, what would you say to the skeptics, you know, that who might question uh, using, using what is kind of like an outside communication to in sports performance? Like sometimes you just got to do things different. Like it's, it's, yeah, you can go to, you can go and do whatever with whatever trainer, whatever coach, that everybody else is doing, or you can come and learn something new, learn something different and, and actually learn how to, 
I guess, process things differently and, and think through things and use language and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. Where do you see this future of sports performance coaching? Uh, where do you see that evolving, particularly with the integration of communication, uh, advanced communication in NLP? So it's always evolving. There's always evolution in it. There's, it's funny because there's evolution. There's a lot of technology that's being introduced to it now. Very, I guess it's a very measured mm-hmm. form of, of, of training. It's, it's very measured. There's, there's measurements in terms of height, weight, speed, uh, power output. Like there's a lot of measurements going on. But when it comes to communication, like it is, it's a game changer, right? It's a game changer because you can shift mindsets. You can shift somebody's thoughts and ideas from not being able to to do something to being able to do something. Mm -hmm. Just almost flick of a switch, right? Mm -hmm. Where, um... I mean, if you're just taking the old school approach and you're just yelling at people all the time, like <laughs> a lot of people aren't going to respond to that. So if if you can actually communicate clearly and and actually, I guess, reframe thoughts and ideas of what's possible, you're going to get more out of an athlete. I want to ask you a couple more questions. I know you're a busy guy and you got kids, so I'm, I don't want to keep you on here forever. The one question, okay, if you had had access to this five-star program when you were, say, in high school, do you think that that would have changed your athletic outcome? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. I, and I'm not saying that just because it's mine. I'm saying that because I had no plan, right? Mm-hmm. I, like... I would show up at workouts and I was consistently showing up to workouts, Mm -hmm. but my coach would just tell us to go work out in the weight room. I was 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kid. Like I had no idea what I was doing. Go lift lift weights. Exactly. That's that's what I remember them telling us to do. Exactly. (laughs) Go do bench press this day. Go do some leg press this day. But I remember like vividly, I, I actually had a plan one day. My, uh, I, I had an uncle that loved doing bodybuilding stuff and I would work out with him and he got, got me into like muscle and fitness magazines. Mm-hmm. And I took in a workout one day and I, me and my, my good friend were doing a, a bicep workout. Mm-hmm. I didn't know at 15 that my biceps weren't really going to matter when it came to, to sports performance, <laughs> but like we were doing this bicep workout. And the coach came over and yelled at us and told us mm-hmm. to stop doing that workout. Like, oh, well, I, I had a plan, coach, but I, I don't know what to do now. What do you want me to do? So the creating the structure is, it's, it's honestly, it's a game changer, right? Mm-hmm. Creating structure and then having consistency. If there's structure, consistency, and, and you're pushing yourself, like mm-hmm. automatically there's going to be improvement. Like I know for sure I would have been a, a better athlete had I had something like this. Absolutely. And w- well, it sounds like with all the metrics that you have, that you're keeping track of, you're just going to get better athletes out of it. But I, I want to throw you a curveball, even though you said, didn't say anything about baseball. Do you believe that the principles behind the five-star uh, formula could be applied in other areas outside of sports like business or personal development and how? Absolutely, 100%. And uh, it's funny that you asked that because I do have, I have a men's program that I've, I've created that is based around the same principles, right? It's It's all the same type of stuff like Mm -hmm. mindset like we have to have a mindset as a business owner to to be able to get through all your ups and your downs especially when you're down right Mm -hmm. we have to have this champion mindset where we're we're really focusing on setting the standard and being the standard and and operating a certain way when our health is elite 
we're going to be able to perform at an elite level. When we're sleeping and eating well, like obviously that's part of recovery. Like that's part of your ability to have energy to be able to produce in your business and, and create more in business. When, when, you, when you have a plan, you reverse engineer a plan, you like you're going to hit your targets and your goals a lot sooner and you're, you're not going to miss them. Or if you do miss them, you have to make some shifts. Um, and then when it comes to like your athletic identity, that's just your brand, your personal brand. Like you look at some of the influencers on, on social media. Now there, there are guys making tens of millions of dollars based off from their personal brand. Same thing. That's the cool. same thing. So, yeah. Well, I want I want to thank you for being on today. We as this continues to evolve, John, if you'd like to come back, I'd love to hear updates. And and my last my, my last question is hey, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's I'm all over the place. Um I'm on Facebook. I have a private Facebook group called the Athletic Secrets. So my Facebook is just it's just John Vickers. I'm on Instagram. Uh, and you're gonna it, give me links, right? Yeah, I'll give you links for all that <laughs> stuff. I have, I have my personal Instagram where I post more of the like the men's program stuff, and then I have my business Instagram, which is the sports performance stuff. I got YouTube, both personal and and business, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, you can be you can be found websites all that good stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, all right. I'm not hard to find. so thank you so much for being on here and i'm gonna cut the recording off and everybody right. if you get a chance look up john vickers he's an amazing human being and he's doing some good stuff i appreciate it michael thanks for having me